So good morning to all of you children. This is the second part of my video for chapter motion of class 9th. Start, uh, in the last video we have uh, done uh, about the state of rest, state of motion, physical quantities, uh, two types of physical quantities that is scalar and vector. Okay, And uh, now here the next topic is distance. Now, what is distance actually? Uh, suppose a body starts from here. This is point B. And it moves like this, like this, like this, like this and reaches here at point. This is the point B. So body started from point A, covered this path, reached to C, uh, C then reach to B and finally arrived at B. So A, C, D, B is the path followed by the body. Now, whatever is the path length, that means we have to measure the length of this path. And whatever is the length of this path, that is called as distance covered by the body. So now, all of you write the definition of distance. Start writing. The path length covered by a body is called distance. The path length covered by a body is called distance. Full stop. It is a scalar quantity denoted by S letter s distance is not denoted by d it is denoted by s okay full stop its units are meter centimeter millimeter feet inch kilometer etc okay. full stop its SI unit see what is S and I it stands for international system of units SI stands for international system of units that means a set of units have been uh, kept together uh, which are known as international system of units and these units are used in uh, throughout the world. So here if you are using SI units and you are suppose you are going next year suppose in the next class suppose in class 10th you are going to USA and going to study over there. So no problem at all because the same set of units have been using over there also. Okay. So all over the world the same units are being used and that system of unit that is set of units is called SI unit. Okay. So SI unit is meter. SI unit is meter. Okay. It is a scalar quantity don't have any direction see directions are changing doesn't matter you have to measure it okay now the next topic is displacement 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 now see what is displacement let us come back to the same example the body started from A and following this path, it, it reached to B. So, and path length is the distance. Now, what is the displacement? Displacement is always the shortest distance. Shortest distance. So, is it a scalar quantity? No. You can see the arrow I have given you. Arrow is indicating from initial. Remember, not between initial and final. No. From initial to final. From initial to final gives a sense of direction. 
so it is from it is to from a to b this arrow is indicating so this gives that displacement is a vector quantity and this it is the shortest distance okay displacement it is shortest distance from initial point to final point okay so now you can write the definition start writing the shortest distance from initial point to the final point is called displacement full stop it is a vector quantity denoted by vector s it is also denoted by s but it is a vector quantity so write like this but we can write like this also no problem like this also no problem okay we write the, like this when we are writing this is equal to the value and the direction both if we are not writing direction then we have to write like this okay so displacement is also denoted by this okay and its units are this meter centimeter millimeter feet inch kilometer etc and its si unit is again meter now what do you think suppose we are going to compare distance and displacement between any two points for any path uh, suppose a body is there which has started from point uh, x and went to point y straight away so what is the distance covered by the body suppose the distance is uh, 100 meters so distance covered by the body obviously it is path length and path length is, length is 100 meter so distance is how much that is 100 meters what is the shortest distance from x to y obviously it is a straight line path is straight line distance is the shortest distance that is again 100 meter so displacement is also 100 meters we are not talking about direction okay we are talking about only magnitude okay and last video i already have told you magnitude means the number and the unit so both are same in this case so now the question arises what about in this case Distance is more or displacement is more? See distance, this path is longer. So suppose it is total is 400. This is suppose uh, 400. This is suppose 200 meter. This is 400 meter. This is suppose 100 meter. So total is how much? 700 meter. And suppose this is 300 meter or 600 meter. That is total 700 meter, this is 600 meter. So again you can say that distance is how much? Distance is 700 meter. Displacement is how much? Displacement is 600 meter. What you find? Displacement is equal to distance when a straight line path is followed. Displacement is less than distance when any other type of path is followed. Now the question arises, is there any other path possible in, in which the displacement is more than the distance. Is it possible? Just think. No. So what we can write? We can write displacement is always less than or equal to distance. So displacement will be either less than distance or maximum it can be equal to distance but it can never be greater than distance in the same way okay so this is a very important point please note down this displacement is less than equal to distance okay now the next topic is speed Uh, we are quite aware of the speed. We have seen while uh, riding a bicycle or a motorbike or a scooty or a car or a bus. We find uh, a dial is there in these, devices, in these vehicles. No? 
in which you will find uh, needle is there and which shows the speed it means how much distance you are covering okay in every hour like kilometer per hour we always talk about and many places you will find besides the road no uh, it is written over there the speed limit should not exceed for more than 40 km per hour so that means uh, that is speed and now what is that actually see actually speed is uh, the distance covered in unit time no? which time which time unit time means it is one hour one minute one second what what is it it can be anything but if, if, if we are talking in si units system of international units then it should be meter per second because meter is the unit for distance and for second for time it is second so meter per second so now write the definition distance covered per unit time is called speed full stop it is a scalar quantity and its units are uh, it, uh, it is a scalar quantity and denoted by speed is denoted by v letter v full stop its units are meter per second kilometer per hour okay like this you can write or centimeter per minute also you can write okay so these are the units of speed now basically we use meter per second and kilometer per hour why because practically we find the devices measure speed in kilometer per hour and scientifically we use always meter per second so what is the relation how we can convert if we are getting in kilometer per hour into meter per second if we are getting into meter per second into kilometer per hour and what is the formula for speed? How to find the speed? That is the next we have to discuss. Okay. So the formula for speed is distance covered upon time taken. So whatever distance covered is covered by the body, that distance. And for covering that distance, whatever time the body has taken, that time. So it's the ratio of distance covered to time taken and S by T. We can write in symbols. Okay. Uh, as already we have discussed, no, this uh, we, were, we are going to discuss the relation between. So, suppose uh, speed of a body is given in kilometer per hour as x kilometer per hour. Why I am taking x? Because see, in your uh, when solving numericals, you may give any value. So, that is why I am not taking any specific value. I am taking a general symbol that is x kilometer per hour. It is there. And you want to convert into meter per second. So, that x has to be multiplied with 5 by 18. If you multiply that x with 5 by 18, then you will get the result in meter per second. Now, suppose it is given in meter per second. Again, I have taken a symbol y. Suppose it is y meter per second. Then how to convert into kilometer per hour? So to convert into kilometer per hour, what you require, you have to multiply that y by 18 by 5. And the result you will get that will be in kilometer per hour. So in this way, you can convert from meter per second to kilometer per hour, from kilometer per hour to meter per second. These are the conversion factors. Please note it down. Hmm. Now, the next thing is that um, suppose there is a child in class 10th very good student hard working, very innovative, very talented, cheerful child. Okay, and the child wanted to have his own scooty. But what the parents told me, generally happens in every house, we know that. We are very much aware of it. Okay, if you are going to score 90% no, then we are going to provide you the scooty after the board examinations, okay? The board examinations and result rather. Okay, child accepted the challenge 
and child are aware that okay it's not a great thing for me you know i can do it very easily so child worked hard and obviously finally the result came and child was able to score more than 90 percent that is around 97 percent okay so parents were happy and they uh, bought a scooty for the child now what happened child took admission in class 11 and the child first day uh, started scooting first the scooty was at rest at zero meter per second at his home now initially it was at zero meter per second then child started the scooty and it came to suppose five meter per second then increases to 10 meter per second then 20 meter per second then 30 meter per second then 50 meter per second then 60 meter per second and finally what happens the child is able to see that there is a little bit crowd on the road what will happen what do you think the child has to apply the brake obviously as brakes are applied what will happen the speed will decrease gradually so from 60 to 50 then 40 then 30 then 20 then 10 5 4 okay and with the speed of 4 meter per second the child is able to cross that crowd and then again finds oh it's open the road is open okay so again the child increases the speed and again reaches to 50 to 60 meter per second okay now as the child reaches to 60 meter per second so and again child finds that oh school is nearby so started reducing the speed and finally 60 50 60 50 50 uh, 45 40 35 30 25 20 15 10 5 and finally comes to the rest in the school now it's okay very nice the child was very happy that uh, he has driven the scooty and came to the school by himself okay it was a new vehicle so all the happiness was there in the mind of the child now as soon as the child enters in the class and keeps the bag on the desk the neighboring students they starts asking oh you are so happy no what happened the next child says oh he has come by his own scooty you know he's got a new scooty that's why he's happy okay so the other children used to say okay very nice congratulations to you but among the classmates one classmate comes with up with a question oh congratulations but just tell me with what speed you have come to the school the child started thinking oh which speed i should say i have not recorded all the speeds with which i have traveled from my home to the school now you tell me so the child make a long list and present that list to the his classmate is it the proper way is it the comfortable way is it the convenient way not at all so for these type of situations when a body is traveling more than one speed with more than one speed like which is practically happens no no vehicle travels with a single speed so for these cases we have got another term that is called average speed the next term is average speed so child has to tell the average speed the single way now, what is average speed? Please note down the heading and write the definition. The total distance covered upon total time taken. So, total, dis total distance traveled, it's a ratio of total distance traveled to the total time taken. It is the ratio of total distance covered to the total time taken okay okay
so it is the average speed is denoted by v a v a v means average okay this it is denoted by v a v and obviously it has the same unit as that of speed now this is the formula total distance covered upon total time taken total distance traveled or covered and total upon total time taken and this is the formula okay now see, uh, especially when we are talking, uh, when we are uh, talking about the motion of a body, you know. So, we start the counting of time you know, when we start observing a body. Suppose you are standing a roadside and you found, you no know, uh, uh, Lamborghini is coming, you know, came to your sight. And by that time, <laughs> its speed was, suppose, 20 meter per second and oh it was nice to see you know you started watching it observing it and you found the moment it disappeared from your sight at that moment its speed was suppose 60 meter per second okay. so according to you initially what was the speed this because before that you was not never saw that car no? you, where it was, it was not known to you. What was the speed? What, what was other history? You don't know. And what about this? After this, again you don't know because it went out of your sight. So this is the period of your observation. So in your period of observation, this is your initial. This is the initial speed of that, that mini car. So we represent initial speed by u, and the final speed by v. Okay. We represent the initial speed by u and final speed by v. In between, okay, it has, you might have changed this speed, okay. Suppose 20 meters, so then 30, then 40, then 50, then, then that's why it becomes 60, you know. So this is the initial speed, this is called final speed. Okay. In NCRT, actually, a formula is given that v average is equals to u plus v by 2. But my children, this is not always correct. Although this is the general formula for every speed, but this part is not always correct. We have got different cases. Based on this general formula, there are different cases and which we have to discuss. Okay. So that we can calculate the average speed when the situations come, when the questions come on that. Because see, physics is a practical subject. We are living with the physics. Okay. We are relying very heavily on the physics okay and nowadays also are real also so we need to think over it we need to keep our eyes and ears and brain open always because every moment we are encountering with the physics we are using physics okay one way or the other way so here also we need to think on it and then we'll get the different formula so now we'll write the case one What is that case? Let's see. That case is that a body is there which travels first S1 distance with speed V1 and the remaining S2 distance with speed V2. That's all. A body is there which covers first S1 distance with speed V1. And the next S2 distance from here to here, S2 distance, this distance is S1, it covers with speed V1, this distance is S2, it covers with speed V2. Then what will be the average speed? Okay. So this is the situation. Now, if you want to see, we have to find the average speed, so we need to find the total distance. So total distance will be how much? Let it be S. It is S1 plus S2, obviously. Okay, it is given. Now, let, we are taking, okay, we are supposing, let time taken for this duration is T1, uh, for this travel. And this part of travel, let the time taken is T2. Just we are supposing, okay, these are the symbols T1, T2. It is not given to us. Now, according to the formula of speed, we know that speed is equals to distance upon time. So for this case, speed is V1, 
distance is s1 time is t1 so s1 by t1 now from here can we find out the value of t1 obviously t1 will come here and v1 will come here so t1 is equals to s1 by v1 now similarly for the second part or the next part v2 is equals to s2 by t2 distance upon time from here t2 is equals to s2 by v2 so the total time is let it be t equal to t1 plus t2 but t1 t2 are not known to us so we will add the its values t1's value is this one t2's value is this one so s1 by v1 plus s2 by v2 so we will get the total time now we have total distance and total time so can we find out the average speed okay so v average is equals to s1 plus s2 upon s1 plus v1 plus s2 by v2 s1 by v1 plus s2 by v2 this we have to solve we can take the lcm so this is s1 plus s2 here if we take the lcm we will get lcm v1 v2 and we can write v2 into s1 so v2 s1 okay okay see so after taking lcm now what will happen you know this is divided by this fraction when we divide by fraction what we can do we can invert it and multiply so we will invert then this will go up so we will get s1 plus s2 bracket we have to apply okay that is very important v1 v2 upon this will come over here so this is the formula for every speed when this is the situation when body is traveling s1 distance speed v1 and remaining s2 distance speed v2 then this is the formula for every speed so very important you have to remember the condition as well as formula only then you will be able to solve the numerical now case 2 comes from here suppose the body covers equal distance this is also s and this is also s the speed v1 and this is with speed v1 suppose body covers half of the distance with speed v1 and half of the distance with speed v2 half of the distance means half of total journey that is total journey is how much 2s so rather than taking total as s i have taken total as 2s so that calculation becomes easy for us so s distance covered by speed v1 and remaining s distance is covered by speed v2 now what will the average speed in this case we need not to go for long calculation here in this formula only instead of s1 we have to put s instead of s2 we have to put s so what we can write s1 is equals to s2 is equals to s so if we put here what we get v average is equals to s plus s v1 v2 upon s v2 plus s v1 now what we can do we can write 2s v1 v2 because s plus s is 2s now from here can we take s common we will take s common and we will left with v1 plus v2 with bracket we have to apply a bracket because we have taken s common now this s can be cancelled out we are left with 2v1 v2 upon v1 plus v2 that is the formula for average speed in this case when body is traveling equal distance is first distance first uh, half of the distance with v1 speed second half of the distance with v2 speed then the formula for average speed is that is 2v1 v2 upon v1 plus v2 that means you can write v average is how much 2v1 v2 upon v1 plus v2 okay so this is the formula for average speed in this case now let's we are going to the case 3 okay so in case third this is the case third the body started traveling from here and reached here so first for first time t1 time for first t1 time it travels with speed v1 and for the next t2 time it travels with speed v2 so only speed and time speed and time is given don't get confused with s1 and s2 okay this we will talk it later on not now 
So the body travels with v1 speed for time t1 and for the remaining part of the journey it travels with speed v2 delta for time t2. Now we have to find out the average speed in this case. So what is the total time taken? Very easily, let it be t total time. Okay, very easily we can find out t1 plus t2. Now we have to go for the distance, total distance travel. Only then we can find out the average speed. So for total distance travel, let the distance, this distance is s1, and let this distance is s2. Let okay, it's not given. So according to the formula of speed, we can write v1 is equals to s1 by t1 distance by time is speed. Okay. So from here s1 is how much? We will get cross multiplied. S1 is equals to V1 into T1. In the same way, for this case, V2 is equals to S2 by T2. Speed is equals to distance upon time. Again, if you want to find out S2, so S2 is equals to V2 into T2. We got it. Now, can we find the total distance? Total distance, let it be S, and that is equals to S1 plus S2. But S1 and S2 is not known. We have just taken it. We have supposed it. So, we will add its values. S1 value is V1 T1. S2's value is V2 T2. So in as place of S1, V1 T1 plus at the place of S2, V2 T2. So we have got the total distance in terms of speed and time only, which is given. So our total time is also in terms of T1 T2, which is given. Our total distance is also in terms of V and V1 T1, V2 T2, which is given. Now average speed is what? Total distance travel upon total time taken. That is V1 T1 plus V2 T2 upon T1 plus T2. So this is the formula for average speed for this case. So all of you note it down. Okay. Now fourth case. Uh, again it is connected with this one only, third one only. The body travels with speed V1 for, for half of the time. And for the remaining half of the time, it travels with speed V2. So total time for the journey is how much? 2T. Nothing is 2T, okay. It is 2T, not 2T, okay. So, for half of the time, for time T, it is traveling with speed V1. For the remaining half of the time, for time T, it is traveling with speed V2. So, both times are equal because they are half of each, half of total time, okay. So, they will be equal, obviously. So, what we can write, the difference is that in previous case, it was T1, T2. So, here what we can write, T1 is equals to T2 is equals to T because both the Times are equal to t. Now we can place this. Uh, we can place this value. Put this value in this equation. So average speed will become c. V one is as it is at the place of t one. We can write t from here. V two is as it is at the place of t two. We can write t from here only. And at the place of t one, t two, we will write t plus t. Okay. So here we can take t common. V one plus v two will there in the bracket. Bracket is very important. T plus t is two t. Okay. Now T T will cancel out. What we will get? V1 plus V2 by 2. Okay. So this is the formula for average speed for this case. Now, the case which I, uh, the formula which I discussed, which were there in the NCRT, it was what? It was U plus V by 2. Is it similar to this? Obviously. So this formula is not applicable for all the cases. It is applicable for this situation only. When the body is traveling with a certain speed V1. Half of uh, for half of the time, and the, for the remaining half of the time is still traveling with speed v2. Or if I am talking in this term, the body is traveling for half of the journey with speed u, and the remaining half of the journey with speed v. Only then you can apply this formula. Not always. So that was your average speed. Okay. So let us take let us take a question. Okay, on the case one. A body is there which travels a distance of 200 meter with a speed of 10 meter per second and the remaining 500 meter with a speed of 20 meter per second. So what we have to find out? We have to find out the average speed. That is the question. Now we know for this type of situation we already have discussed the formula for average speed is S1 plus S2 into V1 V2 by S2 V1 plus S1 V2. Okay. So here here s1 is let it be 200 meter if s1 is 200 then s2 is 500 if v1 is 10 meter per second then v2 is 20 meter per second we need to put the values in that so s1 is how much 200 200 s2 is 